Wokeness is becoming a joke-ness. Wokeness, noun, a state of being aware, especially of social problems such as racism and inequality. Jokeness, noun, something said or done to provoke laughter or ridicule. I get a sense among certain young people on social media that the way of making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people. If I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right or use the wrong verb, then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself because, man, did you see how woke I was? I called you out. This idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're politically woke and all that stuff, you should get over that quickly. The world is messy. There are ambiguities. People who do really good stuff have flaws. That's not activism. That's not bringing about change. If all you're doing is casting stones, you're probably not going to get that far. Woke culture finds its energy in self-righteous belief and the suppression of contrary systems of thought. Regardless of the virtuous intentions of many woke issues, it is its lack of humility and the paternalistic and doctrinal sureness of its claims that repel me. Wokeness, for all its virtues, is an ideology immune to the slightest suggestion that in a generation's time, their implacable beliefs will appear as outmoded and fallacious as those of their own former generation. Some of us, for example, are of the generation that believed that free speech was a clear-cut and uncontested virtue, yet within a generation, this concept is seen by many as a dog whistle to the far right, and is rapidly being consigned to the left's ever-expanding ideological junk pile. Liberals can either write off half the country as irredeemable, or they can ask, what is it about a D next to a candidate's name that makes it so toxic? The Democratic Party needs to be dialed back. It needs to be rooted in common sense. There, in my opinion, is the crux of the problem. Democrats too often don't come off as having common sense to a huge swath of Americans. Democrats are the party of every hypersensitive social justice warrior woke bullshit story in the news. Wokeness. I tell you what, it's starting to get on my nerves. And I'm a lefty. Well, I used to call myself a lefty. According to some woke commentators, I'm now a member of the far right. You're not allowed to have your own opinions anymore. You have to kneel down to the woke mob or else. According to one definition of left-wing politics, Left-wing supporters claim that human development flourishes when individuals engage in cooperative, mutually respectful relations that can thrive only when excessive differences in status, power, and wealth are eliminated. And that's something I still subscribe to, so by all definitions, I am a lefty. But according to the woke mob, I'm not left enough. Because I'm not calling to defund the police or kneel down in front of protesters, I'm no longer a member of the left. I'm now a member of the far right. What a joke this wokeness has become. To be woke, you have to be so far to the left that anybody who doesn't agree with you is immediately considered a supporter of the far right. It's laughable and deserving of ridicule. Back when I was in school in the late 80s and early 90s, being woke wasn't a thing. The word woke pretty much didn't exist, except when saying, I woke up early to watch cartoons. But even cartoons now are under attack by the woke mob. Two episodes of the ABC's hit children's cartoon Bluey were pulled by ABC over racist connotations. They were ultimately reworked and put back on air, but my children, who love Bluey, noticed. They witnessed the effects of the woke mob firsthand. My son even asked, why aren't they saying Ooga Booga anymore? He didn't know the term was racist. I didn't know the term was racist. To be fair to my son, he doesn't even understand the concept of racism as it has never been an issue in his life as he's always had friends and family from all different cultures, my wife being from China and all. Racism isn't a thing at his school or in his life. But it is becoming a thing because of the woke mob who are constantly searching to be offended by everything. Innocent children's cartoons are under attack for crying out loud. Actually, back when I was in school, many people would have classified me as woke. I was always standing up for the downtrodden. Racism was real when I was in school, and I was always defending those poor individuals who were at the brunt of the overt attacks. This led to me being called terrible names for daring to stand up against the racist mob. 
But all I ever called for was fairness. I just wanted everybody to be treated fairly. But apparently nowadays, that's not enough. Fairness is not what the woke mob want. They want to actively suppress contrary beliefs. And YouTube and Google and Facebook and all the rest of them are all complicit. Santa has been in the news of late for all the wrong reasons. A Santa Claus in an Illinois shopping centre was seen telling a four-year-old boy he couldn't bring him a Nerf gun for Christmas, causing the boy to burst into tears. Apparently, because Santa is now woke, it's okay for him to make little children cry. By the way, Santa, a Nerf gun is not the same thing as an AR-15. I don't think many criminals would try to rob a bank with a Nerf gun. And also, by the way, Santa's job in this shopping centre role is not to actually give presents to children, but just to talk to them and ask them what they want. To make them feel happy. But thanks to his wokeness, he really f***ed that one up. Speaking of guns, finger guns are no longer allowed. At my son's school, any child making the gesture of a finger gun is immediately given a time out. Even if they're playing a game of cops and robbers, you're not allowed to point your finger at somebody in that way. Apparently, actual bullets could fly out your finger and potentially hurt somebody. The OK hand gesture is apparently no longer OK in the eyes of woke aficionado. Apparently, it has become a symbol of white supremacy and is now listed as a symbol of hate on the Anti-Defamation League's website. But at least they do clarify that it can be used in an innocent way. Because of the traditional meaning of the OK hand gesture, as well as other usages unrelated to white supremacy, particular care must be taken not to jump to conclusions about the intent behind someone who has used the gesture. In my opinion, that's just not woke enough. If you're truly woke, you'd challenge anybody at the drop of a hat who dares use this inflammatory gesture. Scuba divers, bloody white supremacists always going scuba diving. Australian bug spray manufacturer Morteen has long had an animated mascot, Louis the Fly. They still use him as their mascot, but apparently they've dropped his name from all commercials. Apparently by associating the name Louis with a dirty fly, that's offensive to people who are actually named Louis. I was walking in the supermarket the other day with my nine-year-old son, and I walked past a Morteen advertisement. I inadvertently started singing, I'm Louis the Fly, I'm Louis the Fly. Anyway, my son asked me, who's Louis the Fly? I pointed to the poster and he said, ah, the Morteen Fly. I said, you don't know his name is Louis? No. Anyway, I don't know if that's a result of Morteen wokeness or not, but I could probably assume that it is. The family of British author wartime fighter pilot Roald Dahl have apologised for comments he made about Jewish people in 1983. I'm not going to repeat the comments, otherwise the woke mob might try to cancel me, but there are a few things I'd like to comment on. One, you can't apologise for another person. Two, the man's been dead for over 30 years. It's not our place or the place of his family to make fake apologies on his behalf. The man said what he said. Being woke and apologising for a dead person doesn't change anything. There's plenty of other examples of the woke mob chasing down every little bit of perceived injustice, like some episodes of Faulty Towers being cancelled earlier this year due to racial undertones, or Coon Cheese being labelled racist, even though it's named after its American creator, Edward William Coon of Philadelphia. As Nick Cave pointed out, after a generation's time, the opinions of the current woke mob will be seen as dated and fallacious. What if the world turns vegan, for example? Will all people who dared to eat a piece of meat at some point in their life be ostracised and cancelled? I'll finish with a comment made by British comedian Ricky Gervais recently. The scary thing is being cancelled if you say the wrong thing and suddenly Netflix can take you off their platform. You could be the most woke, politically correct stand-up in the world at the moment, but you don't know what it's going to be like in 10 years' time. You can get cancelled for things you said 10 years ago. Clearly, wokeness is becoming a jokeness.